The only way I would go to either one of those shows is, is to troll. Welcome to another episode from Takedowns to Breakdowns with ANP. Today's episode is about reunions. Not everybody's a fan of reunions. Some people absolutely hate it. Some people love it. And some people are kind of like in the middle. Yeah. I'm a little bit in the middle. There's some bands that I would love to see a reunion. And there's some bands when I when they announce a reunion tour, it just feels very cheap. It just feels like they're trying to milk me of that last dollar. Yeah. I, I also do think reunion tours are a good thing in some ways. Like... Sometimes you discover a band that has already broken up and then when they do a reunion tour, that's your chance to finally see them live. Finally see them live. Or you've seen them live before and you were a fan before they broke up and then now it's been such a long time. It's been such a long time that it brings you back to that youthfulness that you had when you listened to the band. I agree with you, but more often than not, I always feel like the reunion tours come across in a very cheap kind of way. Like a, like a cash grab. Like a cash grab. Just trying to trying to milk that cow one more time. Just trying to get that last penny from all the fans. And then with the merch being overpriced, because most of those reunion tours, the oh, tickets are completely overpriced. The t-shirts are like 70 bucks. It, it, the t-shirts are half the price of the ticket. It's just like crazy amounts of money that, that they're, they're expecting fans to throw at them whenever there's a reunion tour. But... The reason why this topic came to mind is very simple. In 2020, Rage Against the Machine announced that they were going to go on a reunion tour. This year, this year, Mudvayne announced that they were going to get back together. I don't know if they were going to do a tour or release a new album, something along but those lines. But it was lines. a reunion. It was but a it's reunion. a reunion. And that got me thinking. The other day, this guy was walking around the house with his arms wide open. Not my proudest moment. Definitely not one of your best moments. And I started thinking, what about if 2022 throws us a curveball... And we're going to get a Creed reunion. You heard me right. A Creed reunion. What, what do you think about that? I, I don't know, man. I was just singing the song because it got stuck in my head. My arms wide open. My arms wide open. And the, the guy, he has under such a... Under the sunlight. Yeah, I think that's their... Take me to this place. I, I'll show you anything or everything. I can't even remember. I, the, the guy has such a way of singing. I can't believe I know those lyrics. Oh, come on, dude. It, it's. I, I think that's their... I don't want to say greatest because I don't think I should be saying greatest. No, that word should never be used in a Creed in, discussion. In a Creed or Nickelback discussion. 100%. Um, which are... They're basically the same... Ben, <laughs> I feel like one is the American equivalent of the other. Like and the nickel, ba- Nickelback is the Canadian Creed, and, you know and Creed is the American Nickelback. And you know, it's funny. Help. I can I can tolerate the American version of of, uh, of Nickelback. Like, I, I me too. Even though we're Canadian, I, we're Canadian I, I, I have a lot more tolerance for for Creed than I do for Nickelback. Because at least that's somewhat different. Like the Creed lead singer sounds very similar to like a lot of lead singers at the time. I, I know this is going to bring a lot of hate, but from a musicianship perspective, Creed was a far better band than Nickelback will ever be. That's true. I mean, Tremonti on guitar. There's nobody on guitar in Nickelback that even comes close to being as good. So, and, and plus, when your lead singer's name is Chad... That's where you lose. E- everything has been said. <laughs> everything, like, every, every, everything, everything, everything you everything had, is on the all table. the foundation has been lost. Exactly. And the way... The, the the lead singer I, I forgot his fucking name but the li- the name of the Scott lead- Strap Scott Strap also Scott is also a very yeah it's a very douchey name it, but I think Chad is like Chad levels is of like, douche yeah Chad is like boss level boss yeah it's like uh, boss level of it, it's the last uh, the last form of Pokemon like if there was the Pokemon's <laughs> developing in, in into like his la- latest form Chad, Chad is would be the it. final form and. Uh, the way he sings, man, I, it, it just gets stuck in your head because he sounds like he has a pair of balls in his mouth. Not Chad. You mean Scott Strap? Scott like... Strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he does sound. You know what he sounds like? He sounds like he's gargling. Yeah. He sounds like he's gargling, and then he's singing at the. I mean, th- that's a very hard thing to do. Singing while gargling. That that's an incredible skill set that I personally don't have. The fact that he can gargle and sing and not choke is incredible. Yeah. But he does sound like. I don't know if his mouth is full of balls, but it's definitely full of something. Maybe like something hot. You know? Okay, I get it. You know when you're eating something like you really like, like let's oh, say yeah. mashed potatoes, for example. You really like mashed potatoes or ice cream. You really like ice cream and you take a bite of the ice cream and then it's so cold. It hits your gums and your teeth and you're like, oh, oh, you do yeah, one of yeah. those? That's exactly how he sounds like when he's or singing. Or when you burn your tongue on hot chocolate. Or exactly. Maybe he burns his tongue before every concert. Or cake, you know, like when the cake comes out of the oven and you yeah. can't wait for the cake to cool off and you take this huge Instead big chunk, on it, you, you, you just take a bite and because you're like, ah, it, it can't be that hot. And you take a bite and then you start like going like, oh, oh, 
yeah, like yeah. blowing it. That, that, that's that's Scott Trapp. That's Scott Trapp. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. That's it. him down to a T. Yeah. That's ex that, that's his skill set. But that's that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah. With his, with his arms wide open. That's not an easy thing to do. And, and walking around with his arms wide open, I mean, th that's that's an incredible skill even, set. Even me trying to do his voice, it's, I feel like I'm going to lock my jaw off. Like, th that takes levels of skill. The only thing, I, the only way for me to do his voice is if I really fill my mouth with, with like, like M&Ms like or something. He's the definition of not and to talk when you have your mouth full. He sings with his mouth full. Yeah. I, I think that's that's how he discovered himself. I, I'm honestly, I think he, as a singer, he was looking at the mirror one day, he was brushing his teeth, and then he started gargling. And then he started singing. And then a song came on the radio that he really liked, and he started singing. He's like, wow, that's, I could do that. Nobody's done that. that and Creed was born. Hey, you know what, though? I'll give him credit. He's, one of, he, he's a very distinct sounding lead singer. That is 100%. No one else is out there like The him. moment he opens his mouth, you know who's singing. Exactly. And no one else sounds like him. That's the only credit I'll give to... Uh, no, no, nobody even comes close. To Creed. That's the only credit I'll give to Creed. Is that well, they have an incredible guitar player. Yeah, but I'm which gets lost in the struggle. Which gets lost in, in the big struggle of Creed. But that's something I'll give to them. Their lead singer is, is, is a very different type of lead singer that no one else could really And have. one of the similarities that they have with Nickelback is that all their songs kind of sound the same. Exactly. It, it, there's not much people talk about these days people talk about metalcore where, where all the metalcore sounds, sounds the like same, yeah. that was the same issue with Creed Creed was the metalcore of back in the day yeah I guess well not really not from a sound perspective but just from a repetitiveness I, now think about this so based on everything that we just said about Creed and Nickelback I mean Nickelback is still touring so it's not like there's going to be a reunion yeah, tour, I, I really uh, which do, is unfortunate I really do wish Nickelback could go the way of Creed and just stop like full on just stop because they I, think they're better than Metallica, and they they think. I think I saw something the other day where he was saying that he's much bigger than the Foo Fighters or whatever. They're they, it was something along those lines, and I'm like, really, dude? That comes from like, Chad. Like, are you living in a bubble? Really? Like, uh, the fact that they sell out tours in arenas is is incredible. Yeah, like, yeah. So th there's there's a bunch of closet fans of Nickelback out there, which I'm sure there's also a bunch of closet fans. Of uh, of Creed because it's nobody admits in public that they're fans of those bands. I really don't think I would call myself a fan a fan of Creed. Just that one song because it gets that's such a catchy song for some reason. But it's not enough for you to buy a ticket to go see a reunion. I show. would never go to a Creed. Actually, you know what? Maybe I would. Maybe if the I tickets wouldn't. were for free. If the tickets were very cheap, like the tickets had to be. And by very cheap, he means free. There's exactly. no way I would pay I'm for I'm not a paying ticket. to go there. But if it's a free ticket, it's a free ticket. I mean, the only way I would go to either one of those shows is is to troll. And oh, for the laws. For the laws, yeah. Take different signs for different songs, and I would buy a ticket in the front row, and I would just fucking Go troll. to Nickelback and have a Creed sign, go to Creed and have a Nickelback yeah, sign. Yeah, you know, like, uh, go to Nickelback with the Creed saying Creed rocks, you know, like something along those lines, and yeah. just troll the shit out of them. Uh, or, or, or something Go to Creed like, and say, I love you, Chad, on, the, on a big billboard. Perfect, perfect. Uh, and and the sign in the picture of a of a picture frame, <laughs> to, to, of a to photograph, and it has the guy from Nickelback on. Exactly. It. Oh my. There God. you go. I mean, these things just write themselves. Now, those would be the only reasons I would go to either one of those shows, because I, I honestly, th th that to me is worse than waterboarding. Uh, definitely the Nickelback one. I gotta say, I have a. You thing, have a soft spot for Creed. This is I, what we're getting down to, right? I now. have a very. You soft walked around spot. for a week with your arms wide open. Exactly. You sit down on these chairs with your legs wide open, and you have a soft spot for Creed. I, I feel it's not a soft spot because it's only that song. So, like, if I was going to go to a concert for Creed, I would only go for that song and probably just dip. Dude, right but afterwards. every song sounds just like that song, just with different lyrics. Yeah, but he's not saying My arms wide open. Like, I mean, but he's still talking like that. Like, I know he's talking like that, but those words are not coming out of his mouth anymore so he's only he only has his arms wide open for one song I, I will only have my arms wide open for that song and that's it and that's it that's it I'll, I'll walk out right after you just go in for that one track and then you exactly leave. that's it time well spent wow do you, do you actually think that they would get back together I mean uh, uh, Tremonti has his own band and he also say he also plays guitar uh, in another band so like he's still around it's, yeah. it's not like the guys from Creed all of them are still around they Except just have their own no, Scott Strapp, he has oh, a yeah, solo he's a project. Oh, yeah, solo stuff, yeah. So everybody's still around. Everybody's still doing their own thing. It's not like they went the way of the Dodo Bird. Like, they, they're still all, uh, you know, relative, relatively busy in the music business. It's not like they, they completely disappeared. So there's always a possibility of one of them calling the other and like, hey, you know, like, everybody's getting together these days. It's, it's 2022. We've been through a pandemic, you know, 
people need to... People need creed. People apparently. need creed. You know what I mean? They, they need to have their arms wide open to exactly. embrace this new world. So that conversation could totally happen. Definitely. And, and you know, somewhere there is a promoter that would jump on that like white oh, on rice. Definitely. Because I think there's money to be made there. There's a lot of money to be made there. Remember when Rage Against the Machine announced that they were going to go back on a tour? The tickets were like five hundred dollars for like a cheap seat in the nosebleeds, where I had to take binoculars just to see. Uh, them playing, which at that point I might as well stay at home and just watch like on YouTube, like one of their shows. Yeah, I saw them back when Evil Empire came out, so I rather have that memory. I, I I didn't pay that much; it was part of a festival. I didn't pay that much, so I rather had that memory. There's no way I would pay 500 bucks to see Rage Against the Machine. Just it wouldn't happen. And I don't know if Mudvayne throws an album out there and goes on a tour, how much those tickets are going to cost? Because the expectations is it's the a one-off kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So you know they're going to gouge. They're going to gouge on tickets. They're going to gouge on merch. They're going to gouge on everything. But like I said, there's always a promoter out there willing to make some money. So you tell me, if Scott Strap, Carl Tremonti, the two of them sit down, have a tete-a-tete, -tete, you know what I mean? Like they, they have a, a parlay. Don't tell me that there's not a promoter out there that's not going to jump promoter. on this. Yeah, Even yeah. a label, if they decide to release a new album. I, I think labels would jump over each other to, to sign Creed to a new album. And this is the world we're in <laughs> I mean, it's post-pandemic. Anything can happen. Post-pandemic. This is the world we're in. Anything where, can happen. Where Creed would have people dying just to get them their signature on a on a contract for a label. All right. The question would be: Will the old fans from Creed come back, or will they hit a brand new target audience um, and have brand new fans? I don't. I don't know. I, I could never answer that question. I, I can't even believe they had old fans to be <laughs> Exactly. I don't even know how they became a thing. I don't even think I'm a fan of Cream. I'm just a fan of arms wide I know, wide we, open. We, we got to the point. Yeah, you, I you're just, just all about clear. your arms wide I'm, open. I just want to make that clear. I'm not you're, a fan you're, of Creed. You're the freaking Jesus of Creed. You're walking exactly. around with your arms wide open. Jesus Christ. Uh, on that note of Creed reunion, you want to you want to tackle some bands they would you would love to see um, on a, now now on a more serious note some bands yeah, you would love to see on a reunion there there are, I think I already said this there are the, the types of reunions that that can happen and one that I really want is Norther and we were Norther we became Norther fans after they broke up and so it would be really cool to see Norther have a reunion and then us going to but the I don't, show. I don't think you necessarily need a tour. Not Even a, a one-off show just a one -off anniversary. Show. Just a, uh, a one-off show anniversary a one -off show or something. show anywhere and we will buy tickets just to go there. I, I, to me, when, when a band, like for example, let's use Norther as, a, as an example, right? When a band like that gets back together, you really know it's a one-off and they're really not doing it for the money. There's other bands that I always have a little bit of my doubts, right? Like Black Sabbath, for example. I would love to see a Black Sabbath reunion because I've never had the pleasure to see Black Sabbath live. So I would love to see a Black Sabbath reunion. But once again, you know those ticket prices are going to be insane. Yeah. I would have to sell both of my testicles and perhaps one liver in the black market just to afford... You only have one liver. Well, that so I'm not selling more than what I have. It's <laughs> just testicles one kidney. Liver. So anyways, and sell it just to get tickets in the nosebleeds for, for a Black Sabbath concert. But... I'm, it, it comes down to what are you willing to pay for that one time off experience? If you start to feel like Ozzy Osbourne goes on a reunion tour every two years, it starts to dilute the product and then you always have one, one foot back. If you're doing just a one-off show, a one-off reunion, let's say Black Sabbath playing in Manchester or Liverpool, whatever, one time anniversary gig, something along those lines, I think that, that, that carries a little bit more weight in terms of the value because you, as a fan, you realize that they're really not doing it just to milk it. They're doing it to celebrate the band Usually and tour coming together. A tour, specifically when the tour goes two years, three years in, and, and they come to the same continent twice. So like they play North America once, then they go everywhere else. It's like, ah, you know, there's still enough demand. Let's go back for another run. And it starts to feel a little bit, I, I start to feel a little bit jaded. Yeah. But you're with Norther, I'm with Norther. Black Sabbath been, to me... You've been trying to get Norther to actually happen. I've been trying to get that ball rolling, but it's not going to happen. Black Sabbath to me is one high on my list of bands that could still get together because the guys are still around. There's definitely bands out there that I would love to see that I never had a chance to see, but it's just not going to happen. Pantera being one of them. Uh, Nirvana being another one, I would love to see Motorhead. The, Motorhead, like I would love to see those bands, but that, let's face the facts. The that Motorhead is just... one for you hurts even more though, because you had a chance to see them in. Yeah, let's not go down that road. I had a chance. I I, I didn't take it, thinking there was always going to be another chance, and then there was no was other like four chance. Four months after. Four months after, let, let me passed away. So I, I I just 
think that there are some bands out there that you can really do certain things in a creative way, in a respectful way, that really doesn't diminish anything from the band and it still allows them to do what they need to do. Like for example, Slayer retired. And three years from now, if Slayer comes back on a reunion tour, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck? I saw them twice in that last tour because exactly. it was supposed to be the last tour. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'll go see Slayer anytime they, they're around, but it starts to dilute the whole thing, you know what I mean? And then you don't really, like I've been going to Scorpion reunion and, and farewell tours, I feel like for the past 15 years, and the guys are still around. They have yeah. an album coming out, I don't know, at some point in time. So it, it's just, to me, there's certain bands that I definitely would love to see on a reunion. Black Sabbath, Norther, those two are really on the high end. And then there's certain things that I would like to see from other bands who perhaps lost one of the band members or, you know, like Nirvana, for example, or even Children of Bodom, if they did like a, an anniversary, like 30 years anniversary or 35 year anniversary, and they have other bands coming in or different lead singers from other bands coming in and, and doing, you know, technically covers. That, yeah. Uh, uh, of that kind of stuff. I like that kind of stuff. Because that it's, you, you, it doesn't feel to me, it doesn't cheap, it doesn't cheapen the product, and it doesn't cheapen to keep the history. The memories alive. Exactly. It feels more like a celebration and not necessarily a way of uh, milking the fans of one more dollar. At least that's my feel. But going back to Creed, let's, let's hope 2022 doesn't bring a Creed reunion. Yeah. If you could ask for one brand to come back on a tour outside of Northern, and I already said uh, uh, Black Sabbath for 2022, do you have a band that you would like to see on a on a reunion? On a reunion? Just on a reunion tour? Oh, I, ca I can't think of one right now. I actually, can't, I actually can't think of one, like a reunion. If you're telling me a band to actually go on tour. Oh, a band to go on tour, almost so any many, band, almost so many, any band yeah. at this point. But, but I, can't, I can't think right now of, of a, a band uh, to go back on tour. Okay, fair enough. It's hard off the top of your head to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to think of something. As long as it's not Creed. As long as, uh, I will take anyone except for Creed. Okay, fair enough. Me too. I'll take anyone except from Creed. And if there's something that I'm looking forward to, to uh, 2022 is perhaps the announcement that Nickelback is breaking up. Oh, the, the only thing better than Nickelback breaking up would be Five uh, Flavor Fruit Punch breaking up in uh, uh, 2022. Yes. Five Flavor because Fruit Punch. Because that th those two bands are are like on my most disliked list. I just and Smash Into Pieces. That's a given. That's a given. I'm not even going to say anything else. I don't want to give them any publicity. All right, guys, let us know which bands you would like to see on the reunion tour. Let us know in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts on Creed. Do you guys also have your arms wide open for that kind of reunion? He does. No. Um, Technically, you do. You just on. said you would go there for that one song. Probably, yeah. Uh, okay, so there you go. But I don't even have to. I can just go online and just find for, a live video. For every two steps forward that you take, on I'm Creed, taking, you're like taking three six steps, steps back. back. <laughs> yeah, you're backtracking all the time. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this discussion on Creed Reunion Tours. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you have topics of discussion that you would like us to address on future shows, also use the comment section below. We'll always be looking at content on cool ideas for us to talk about on these shows. All right. See you next week. See ya.